from Paramount Pictures. It's the Tom Likas Show. Am I still on the air? And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, returning to the program uh, with an update on his situation. And for those of you who did not hear Taron James the first time, Uh, We will have him uh, bring you up to speed. Taryn James returns, and I thank you very much for being with us. Are you there, Taryn? Yes, I'm here. Oh, good. All right, we're on the air. Hello, Tom. How you doing, (laughs) Taryn? I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm doing great. Now, of course, uh, many people heard you the first time you were on the show. But before we get to this newest development, for people who did not hear you, you have been battling battling an unfair child support situation for some time. Can you kind of capsulize for people who did not hear you the first time what sure you've been thing. going through? Yeah. Yeah, for over a decade, this has been going on. You know, this is the thanks I get for the service that I contributed to the Gulf War to come back and let someone lie about who the father of a child is. And what's worse is that L.A. County still holds me financially responsible for it. To date, I'm out $50,000 for a child that isn't mine and I don't even know. Hi, wait, now let, let's go back to the beginning. How did you, first of all, you found out your wife had a baby. Did you know right away it wasn't yours? Whoa, 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 whoa. back up. One moment. Um, um, first not, of all, it wasn't my wife. Was it your wife? It, it was a girl who was my best friend. Your best friend. <laughs> Uh, it was someone that I uh, trusted completely. Um, we, we ran around, did everything together, and she still did this to me. She found herself pregnant in a bad situation, and here I was in the military. I mean, you so, had you had sex with her, but before you got deployed, uh, not in a time frame that would have resulted in a birth. And let's the you know, pregnancies are now over twelve month periods. So how in the world, if, 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 if you were deployed and it was not possible for you to be the father, how mm-hmm. in the world did you get named the father? Well, that's the thing. I'm halfway around the world. kind of hard to defend yourself on that allegation. But I'm coming to that right now. Basically, I was served with someone else's court summons. You can't have that on. And it's just it's a horrible situation. Um, I was never served. The first card that someone came to me came in the wrong name. I brought it to Child Support Services attention. They promised me a blood test in L.A. County. Never happened. Now, keep in mind, I followed up on this. Three phone calls a month for about a year and three months. Just like clockwork. Wait, let, let me get, wait, I want to make sure we get all the facts here straight. Because, oh, sure. again, a lot of people didn't hear you the first time. So, you're off... Uh, during the Gulf War, defending our country, uh, fighting our fight, you come back and you are told you're a father. And, um, but you couldn't no. have been a father. Is that what happened? Well, what had happened was um, I'm over there in the Gulf War, and a letter comes to the ship, to my command, saying, there's a child, and I want child support for it. So my command comes to me and goes, what's going on with this? And I explained to the, the whole story, can't possibly my, be my kid, I don't know exactly what's going on, but let's do a blood test. So they sent a letter to the mother requesting a blood test and the fact that I'd even pay for it, which was something I didn't want to do, not for a child that isn't mine. And she never followed through with it. And so she dropped it at that end, and instead of continuing with the military, she went straight to the... Um, uh, welfare and signed a declaration 
falsehood stating that her and I had sexual relations that resulted in the birth of the child and signed this document under penalty of perjury. Yeah, guys, what's the name of the last person who got prosecuted for lying on one of those forms? <laughs> well, to date, that would be zero prosecution. Right. <laughs> Someone is keeping up. I, I love it. All um, right, so, uh, so here you are. You're on a ship. You can't very well go into court. You can't very well hire an attorney. So, oh. so what happened? Oh, yeah, my level of pay back then was $700 a month. You tell me how anyone in the service is supposed to afford a $2,500 attorney. And the Navy is very efficient at garnishing your wages when someone claims you owe child support, aren't they? They're among the best at that. Yes, they are. And in addition to that, their, uh, their JAG will not represent you in court. They will not represent you on any civilian kind of type of case. They just take the money. Yes, they do. And hand it over to anybody who makes a fraudulent allegation like, like this. Right, and you can't switch jobs, and it's a guaranteed check. All right, so how long were you on that ship while all this was going on? How, how much longer were you there? Oh, it, well, by the time all this had happened, there was only three more months till I was back. And the, the military gave me the time off to deal with this and everything. But she was too busy with her new boyfriend at the time. Today it's her husband, but back then it was her boyfriend to deal with any of this. Didn't follow through with the blood test, didn't live up to any of the obligations or any of the promises she set forth. And uh, what she did is she waited till just before I was about to be discharged, the end of my contract, and she went and applied for welfare. Signing that document under penalty of perjury right. before anybody says anything about the POP deck, you know, Paternity Opportunity Program, that declaration that signed, that wasn't in legislation until 1995. Obviously, this case is older than that. <laughs> um, I didn't even see a birth certificate. Oh, and also, when you're in the military, it's standard that you contact the Red Cross. The Red Cross will contact any command and notify you of the birth. That never happened as well. That's how shady this was. Wow. All right. So uh, when you, they started taking money out of your paycheck in the Navy while you were fighting the Gulf War. Oh, God. They have taken money from me from every orifice, if you will. They take it from the income tax return. They have 50% wage garnishments. Um, your checking, your savings account, anything of monetary value they will take. Oh, and the sad thing is, remember how I was saying I was never served? Yes. The second court summons was served to a John Doe. Um, and keep in mind, I was taking care of my grandmother and my great aunt at the time, so there was always care provided at that house 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The process server said that he made three attempts, and no one was there and served a John Doe at the, in the final end. At what address? At, at, they said the address that I was living at. But when we were in court and I was uh, questioning on him, he named the wrong style house, wrong color, wrong position on the block. Everything was wrong. But the judge turned to me and said, I believe you were served. Did you have an attorney? No, not the first time. I didn't think I needed one. I figured, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, the ignorance of my youth. And might, might I say before your show. Yes. <laughs> Way back when, I figured who would possibly make anyone pay for a child that wasn't theirs and they had nothing to do with Oh, you believe that, huh? <laughs> you were naive. <Yeah. laughs> Let's just say I'm much wiser today. I'm sure you learned the hard way. But I'm still stunned about the process servers and about L.A. County having as high as a 79% default rate. That right there tells you something's fishy. Did you ever get a blood test or a DNA test on this kid? Not until the year 2001, which only went to prove what I believed. Uh, so we went back to court. Now, keep in mind, the district attorney had taken thousands, thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, now, before, just before the, the DNA test, I love this. The district attorney calls me up and says, she's not cashing any of her checks. Do I know where she is? They couldn't even find her because her and her husband have moved around so much. No one knew where she was. We probably have about 15 addresses on them to date for moving around so much and so often. 
then we finally, you know, she finally, um, the law is passed, and they have to either give her the money or return the money to me. Uh, so they find the mother. They forward the checks to the mother. That's when she finally contacts me, and that's how I get the blood test, the DNA test. And um, proves what I believed. And we actually had wor worked out a verbal agreement. I told her everything that you helped me with today is how much I will help you when this is all over and done with MR. You know me. I'm not going to give up this fight. And so um, after she did the first couple steps and then reneged on everything. Go figure. <laughs> it's your best friend there. Oh, no, that, that was over with long ago. <laughs> But, yeah, that, that's how fast these women can turn on you. Well, can women be your friend, Taryn? <laughs> Let's just say I'm finding that harder and harder to find true. I've been telling you that for years, you know. Well, yeah, but I wish you would have told me that back in 92. I don't know why you weren't listening, Taryn. I was here. Oh, uh, where was I? Yes, I didn't tune. I was on another I station, but I was here. That. I've learned from the error in my ways. I understand. I will right, we'll take a break here. We'll come back. We'll talk some more about this. Now, you're hearing Taron James. We'll get the uh, latest on his case, but you're hearing the deal. He's been paying child support for years for a kid that isn't his. And, uh, of course, many of you have done the same, but we don't want to hear your horror stories. You may have questions for Taron or about this system, or maybe you think Taron should pay. For God's sake. We'll get your opinions coming up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I don't give a flying F, Tom. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Taryn James is a return guest to the program. And he's been, uh, he's been paying child support for years on a kid that's not his. Now, what is the latest development here, Taryn? The latest development is finally got my name cleared of this, but haven't seen one penny back. Uh, when well, wait, 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 wait. When, you say, when you say your name has been cleared, what does that mean? Uh, I've had the case set aside which is basically overturned. How did that happen? I thought that once uh, uh, you, once you passed your whatever it is, depending on what state you're in, the six months, the one year, the two years, to prove you're not the father, that's it. You're locked in forever. Well, there was a little piece of legislation that I fought, with, fought for with a, a bunch of people in the same situation that we got what's known as AB 252 passed, which is a very watered-down version of what we wanted. That's that the bill that was instituted ago. by the former Assemblyman Rod Wright, correct? Correct. It was basically hijacked, in my opinion, and taken over by Child Support Services and their senator, um, and it basically took Rod Wright's bill, watered it down even further. And we have the bare minimum of protection or relief for people in my situation. Wow. But, uh, one thing I'd like to say is uh, before that, when I had the DNA test and I had submitted it to the courts, they had sent in their official response that it was irrelevant, hearsay, and inadmissible, even though it was notarized by the physician who performed the test. And they just weren't going to have any part of it. It's outrageous. Isn't it? Of course it is. And as we've said on this program so many times, so many times. Uh, you know, fraud is illegal. Uh, unless you're a woman trying to steal uh, child support payments from a man. Yeah, and don't forget perjury. Perjury, too. To make a statement that one doesn't know to be true is the same as making one that is known to be false. And that is under perjury. And my own Torrance Police Department here refused to, t to prosecute under that or to basically... Uh, start the process on that. They said, oh, she's just a girl. She doesn't know. Oh, 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 unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Now, you are uh, tied in with this uh, Mark Angelucci and the yes. uh, National Coalition of Free Men. What's that? That is a group of men that have come together to fight for men's rights. They are addressing issues across the board from paternity fraud to equal medical care for men to just fair treatment in the court system. And I'll tell you what, there was no other group that would help me in my situation. 
And they have been helping you. They've been helping you financially as well? Um, I haven't taken any money from them, but they've helped me in every way possible as far as representing me in court and just... Well, the, that's the, that, uh, whether they handed you a check or not. Right. That, the point is, huh, representing you in court is money. But even just being there, a shoulder to cry on and someone to say, damn it, it isn't right. And it, this has been hard. This has been the hardest decade of my life. I'm sure it has. Hopefully the guys who think they've got female friends out there are paying close attention. <laughs> oh, especially. I learned the hard way on that one. Uh, let's take some calls here at 1-800-5800-TOM for our guest here, Taryn Smith. And uh, your telephone calls now. Stephen in North County, San Diego. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Taryn James, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, I got this uh, guy... Uh... Uh, a while back, I had this girlfriend that I was uh, seeing off and on, and uh, I got her, uh, I think I got her pregnant, and uh, she was telling me all kinds of lies and stuff like that when I hooked up with her again not too uh, long ago. And I did some uh, backdoor work and uh, checking through Google and stuff, and I found this guy's uh, this uh, guy's location, and uh, I know this guy has been paying uh, child support on this kid, and he looks just like me. Just because it looks like you, don't go with that. I can't stress strongly enough. Never go by what you're told. Find out the facts and always, always, always get a DNA test. Well, I was wondering with the with the information that I got uh, that tied to the lies that she's been telling me, uh, it, it gave me some uh, tight suspicion, and I followed the trail. She told me this guy's... I mean, she told me that her roommate's name was Casey. She was a f professional surfer. And I find out that this Marine's name is Casey. And all this other information, I tracked it all the way down, and I found out where he's at, and I was wondering if you think I should uh, tell the guy uh, the information I know, just forward that information to him. Well, I recommend finding out for yourself. That's the most important thing is, is this your child? I would get a DNA test so that way you know. Well, well, by the way, by the way, the by the way, I recommend you have an attorney, Steve, and that's what I recommend. Oh. You need an attorney. I'm completely abstract from it. I'm I'm like uh, scot free on the whole thing. I was wondering if I should tell this guy, you know, indirectly through the mail or something, give him the information that I have that might help him. I I still believe you should do it through an attorney if you have one, simply because of uh, liability possibilities, uh, slander possibilities. I'm not an attorney myself. Well, I wouldn't be doing something like that without the advice of an attorney. I just wouldn't do it. But good luck. Steve, on the Tom Likas Show for Taryn James. Hello. Hi, Tom. First time, long time. Thank you. Um, well, I, was, I think you took some of the words out of my mouth. I'm a retired attorney, and I used to practice in another state, actually, and I had cases similar to this. Um, and what you just said is the bottom line. As soon as someone comes to you and says, this is your child, uh, and you, you want to do a DNA test and you want to make sure, that's fine. But do not wait. Do not wait a week or two weeks or a month. Talk to a lawyer right away because, uh, as what happened here, the person can say, oh, yes, we'll get a test and time will pass. And as you pointed out, the courts generally operate under the assumption that if enough time goes by, they're not interested in DNA tests anymore, although that's starting to change, and uh, partly thanks to your clamoring, Tom. But you've got to have a lawyer handle it because you have to challenge every aspect of it right away. And especially in this case, in Terrence's case, where he can demonstrate that it is not possible that he would be the father. I think that this is just the kind of situation that's ripe for a uh, a civil action. By the way, Taryn, Taryn James was not only not in a position to be the father, Taryn James was defending the United States of America. Well, right, and who was defending me? I mean, I mean, Taryn James was, 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 was fighting in the Gulf War. Right. How can our country allow somebody like that to get screwed? Well, the state courts where these things play out just are not interested in any of the details like that. But I think that this is a great, you know, again, as you mentioned, Tom, and everyone's mentioned, and, and the new state legislation has changed this a little bit, the presumption is going to be, after a certain amount of time, 
that the person who's been named is the father. And the courts are just not going to be interested in uh, a dispute or a contest at, at a certain point. Now, yes, that is changing a little bit. But even more important, in a case like this where he can verifiably demonstrate that he cannot have been the father, this is a perfect case to bring a civil action, charging her with fraud, with signing a, a malicious statement, uh, asking for all of the monies paid to be repaid, plus interest, plus damages, plus attorney's fees, uh, especially here in California. I believe something like this could be a precedent-setting action, and I, I would take it up with the lawyers at the organization that uh, you mentioned, because... Uh, this is the only way to crack through this tough shell of all of these years of, of the child support precedents. I agree with you on many points, but I want to let you know that Child Support Services has come up with a system to bypass the whole DNA test, and it's called the POP deck, the Paternity Opportunity Program. When a person signs this, before you've even seen the child in most cases, you're signing it on the just what you've been told, that it is your child, something you don't know. And when you're signing this, you're signing that you are the biological father, which is something no one can know without a DNA test. I don't care how much the child looks like, for, looks like you. Also, why is it that the hospital receives $10 for each completed form? I mean, how many t hundreds of thousands of births are there in California alone? Think of how many $10 that adds up quickly to the hospitals. And why is the federal government paying for this program? Why is the federal government paying for DNA tests? That's what they really ought to be paying for. Oh, yeah. There was one state that actually found it was more cost-effective and more cost-efficient um, in their obtaining their paternity judgments, doing a DNA test right off the bat, and it saved them a fortune in, co in, in court costs. I have to believe it will also save on the number of unwanted children born into the world. Mm -hmm. Children born to women who can't afford to support children. Uh, uh, well, uh, children born to women who will never, ever be able to tell their kid who their real father is, never know the medical histories of that bartender they had the one night stand with or whatever. Uh, this would be so good for society, and yet, uh, because the government is simply stealing money from men who are not the father of these children, in order to save money on welfare costs or taxes or what have you, uh, the DNA testing for every live birth will never get done unless everybody rises up and says, we need DNA testing for every single birth in America. Absolutely. We need it. And there is no financial incentive for child support services not to do this. I mean, they are making so much money at this, it's not even funny. In addition to the $40 million in operational costs, for every dollar that they collect, they get a federal matching dollar as an incentive. So we're talking billions of dollars is being pumped into the system. And it's the tax dollars. Men and women, whoever pays taxes, should be really pissed off at this. No doubt about it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, we're talking with Taryn James. Owen and Phoenix, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How's it going? Great. Hey, I got a question for Taryn there. Um, once he found out that he, she was pregnant and he absolutely was sure that it wasn't his kid, why didn't you grab that bitch by her hair and say, we're going right now to get a DNA test, whether you like it or not? But well, Taryn was in the Persian Gulf, wasn't it? Weren't you, Taryn? Yep. Ter Taryn was not in California. He was in the Persian Gulf during the first Gulf War. Oh, I knew that. I didn't know exactly, like, when he was back, like, when he found out. But um, that bitch should be locked up, guaranteed. Oh, I agree with you 100%, and I am working on that day and night. You, you have no idea where she's at? We have an idea that she's in the Arizona area. We have three addresses that I'll be following up on in the near future. Okay. Yeah, but I'd like to get my hands on her myself, because I'll tell you right now, I pay taxes, and I'm we're paying taxes for these bitches to accuse men, you know, oh, um, you're the father, no doubt, but they don't have—they don't do nothing with it. All these attorneys and all this—all this—they drop it on you like it's your fault. And you're over, over serving for our country, and you're just getting crapped on. And I can't stress strongly enough: 
never go into child support services courthouse or even just see them without an attorney present. I was so railroaded, it's not even funny. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Hey, Tom, thanks for taking my call. Can you take me out Paris Hilton style? Paris Hilton style? <laughs> Do we have a Paris Hilton style there, Brent? <coughs> <laughs> Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 866. You're 19. How much? From Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. We're joined by Taryn James, our return guest to our program, who has been fighting a battle against child support for a kid that uh, was not his. It's proven. And Taryn, where are you at now? You're trying to get, just for people who have not been paying attention, just tuned in, you are trying to get some of that money back that you've paid. Is that the deal? I'm just trying to get what's fair, Tom. Absolutely. I think you should get every penny back with interest. And then some, yes. I mean, you should uh, be, you should get all of it back. But yep. now you don't have to pay anymore. Is that the deal? That's at, what it is at this point. But get this, I still have to file to get my name off the birth certificate. I still have many more court dates coming up. Uh, the latest one was that appeals uh, process where I just got the response back the other day which basically they're not going to grant me any kind of refund. There's actually two, second, the two sections in the child support leg or laws that forbid repayment. But it goes on to say that this is an issue that needs to be addressed with our legislative. And laws need to be changed. That's one good thing they did right in there. But as of this morning, I went down and I got the paperwork necess necessary to file for the Supreme Court. That's our next stop. That's the California Supreme Court. Of course. Right. You're going to go to the California Supreme Court, and you want to be refunded. How much money are we talking about here before interest or penalties or anything? Uh, how much is amount, we're talking over $50,000. $50,000 to raise a child that's not yours. And the only reason why it's that low, low is because I kept fighting it in court. So when you say it's that low, were you not making payments? Were you just saying, forget it, I'm not going to pay? What was happening? Well, between, you know, not being able to keep jobs and not being able to find jobs, because who wants to hire you when they have to, you know, cut another check and do this extra accounting and being threatened that if anything's incorrect, they get a $1,000 fine? What employer wants to hire you? Yep. Not to mention, you are branded a deadbeat. Um, God, up at the state capitol building, I've been referred to by the opposition as a liar, a loser, a deadbeat, and a sperm donor. It's like, hey, I didn't donate a thing. You should sue all those people. That's slander. Well, in the in the years to come, or hopefully next year, we are planning a class action lawsuit. Good for you. I mean, I'd go after every state assemblyman, every state senator, anybody who made a comment like that. I'd get right into their pants, baby. I'd get right into their wallets. The best piece of advice I ever got from Child Support Services was, if we don't like the way they do things, take us to court. Well, I'd like to let uh, Philip L. Browning of Child Support Services L.A. County know I will be seeing you in court. And Curtis Child for all of California Child Support Services, met you in person, and I'll see you in court as well. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, let me say hello here. Look at these calls. Unbelievable. Let's say hello here to David in Phoenix on the Tom Likas Show for Taryn James. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Great. I kind of have a similar situation. I'd like to get a little bit more information about um, how I could look into the men's rights and the whole DNA outcome as well. Just go on the Internet and type in paternity fraud. Uh, it really depends on what your situation is. Um, if you go to Veterans Fighting Paternity Fraud, I have a little home page. Just send me an email. I can hear about your case and give you my recommendations. I'm not an attorney, but I can show you what's worked for me. Sounds good. We'll give you Terrence's email address at the end of the hour. That works. All right, David. I appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Ed in Phoenix on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Dad. How are you? Great, son. 
I have an idea that may actually pass the California legislature. I know it'll be tough with the right and the left, but this may actually work. Where as soon as a man can prove to a court that he is not the father, all child support ends, stops right there. Now, the catch would be that he may not be able to collect whatsoever, but uh, now that he's been, pro- he's been proven that he's not the father, the mother has maybe 12 months or so to present to the court who, who is the actual father, and then the person that was paying child support can recover what he paid from the biological father. And, the, and if she doesn't uh, prove who it is within 12 months, then she's stuck reimbursing him whatever he paid. Yeah, well, that sounds nice and reasonable, but yeah. Child Support Services, in California at least, is making far too much money to even consider that. They have shot us down in every piece of legislation that, though to you and me, would make good common sense. They have shot it down because it's not cost-effective to them or their bottom line. Uh, keep in mind, this is child support that is only interested in the money. They don't care of visitation. They don't care that you never see the child, even though there's a court order. They have nothing to do with any other aspect other than the money and the insurance for the child. That's their only concern. I know. I just think that there should be some bill called the Biological uh, Father Enforcement Act or something like that, but I'm glad that people are actually fighting this and taking it all the way to the top, and I hope everything works out for you and the laws get changed and actually become realistic and reasonable and fair. Yeah. But that's there was all I have a pater- to say. Yeah, there's a paternity fraud workshop, uh, workshop in uh, Sacramento that we attended, and there was five of us on the paternity fraud side to 35 of them. And it was unfair across the board. They, they wouldn't even consider us or give us the time of day. And thank you for calling from Phoenix. Here's Mike on the Tom Likas show for our guest, Tara James. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great. Terrence, how are you doing, buddy? Doing well. Good, good, good. Hey, you know what? I just got a real quick qu- uh, question. This lady accused you of being the father of the child, right? Correct. Uh, doesn't she have to prove that in any way, shape, or form? No, the burden of proof uh, lies on the father. It's uh, that- a ridiculous system that they have in place. Like I say, she just signed that one document under penalty of perjury stating that, you know, we had sexual relations that resulted in the birth something that's clearly not true right. and it's just been a nightmare experience so you're no longer innocent until proven guilty it's burden of proof is on the father and that keep in mind these, these men are not getting the information they need in time that they can defend themselves in courts and that's the bottom line problem that we face here wow that's just crazy man yeah that that is just crazy. This is the stuff I warn. This is the stuff. Don't believe it, Mike. This is the stuff I warn guys about all the time. Taryn knows he's a listener. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, man. Well, hey, buddy. You know what? I wish you the best of luck in this, and I hope you get her good. Thank you very much. Thank I'll you. Blow her up. I'll blow her up. Here you go. Is our telephone number Parker on the Tom Like His Show from Mark? Hello, hello, Dad. Hi, son. So I have some news. Uh, I'm a listener. Um, I try to live my life by your rules, and to be completely honest with you, I mean it succeeded immeasurably. Uh, you know, I'm we're work oriented, network administrator, and all this. Age 22, and here I am. The one question that I have, and you're the guy who can do it and who can answer it. Why can't we propagate this message out to more people? What I have seen time and again throughout friends, throughout family, is that the second even you start to have kids, which kind of follows the whole segue of your your kids and then screaming and moving into this, they've got to be warned. I mean, younger generations are going to run into this problem even more than we are with the litigious society we're in. Propagate the message. Just tell them, hey. You know, these kids, they can they can either be, you know, a godsend if you're into it, or they can be, you know, cheer hell for you if you're not. So, you know, can you answer, I mean, how are we going to warn these people about this kind of stuff? By doing this. Exactly. I mean, public forum is the best place to do it. I, I can't believe that this is just, this whole litigation is just sheer ridiculousness, and I think that it needs to stop. Bird by the way, by it. the way, Parker, if you go to our website, blowmeuptom.com, 
Uh, we have a link right on the front page, and you can learn all about uh, the organization that Taryn has been talking about here. And uh, Mark Angelucci, by the way, has been a guest on the program. It's the Los Angeles chapter of the National Coalition of Free Men. Fantastic. All right, Parker. All right, well, blow me up, Tom. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Carla, on the Tom Like is show for Taryn James. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Oh, I have a statement. Um, I have a son, and I'm getting child support. And I feel sorry for this guy. I mean, what that bitch did to him, that's wrong. And we need to end up this. I mean, what's gonna, what are we going to expect in the future? Thousands of women are doing this, Carla. It's not just Taryn. There's yeah. thousands of them. I hope, yes, I hope, I'm hoping that I'm not the only one calling or women who need to call. You know, there's good men out there that they're willing to pay for their kids. So I don't know what these bitches, they sit around in their couches getting all this money for innocent men. And plus, we pay them, those people that we work our butt out to support our kids. And they're doing nothing. This is wrong. We knew in this. Well, the we situation have... even goes worse than just that. We have cases where one woman has gone to multiple counties and named multiple men the father and collect multiple checks. And the fact that the district attorney's office has a name for this, they call them county hoppers, just sickens me. And let's not forget the Trevino case where there was no child. Yeah, that's that, how bad. In that was in Texas. Texas. It was in Texas, wasn't it? Or New Mexico? New Mexico. New Mexico, yeah. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. Yeah, a woman actually fabricated a child, couldn't even produce the child when it came right down to it. Outrageous. Let's take one last call here from Andrew on the Tom Likas show for Taryn James. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yes, um, yeah, I just want to know what uh, I could possibly do as a citizen of California to, you know, pre help prevent this because I think it's absolutely, you know, it's bold that the fact that women have the power in the child services law to do this. And I just want to know, like, can I write my uh, legislator or my congressman or something like that? Or Yes, your senator and assembly member, write them. That's the only way we've gotten laws passed to address the issues as little as we have. Uh, more and more states are adopting some kind of anti-paternity fraud more and more each year. California is the last on the list. Because yeah, I know I've had problems with uh, child services before with my aunt and her kids being taken away because her husband's uh, sister was jealous of them. So she just got she got mad and she worked at social services and got them taken away. And there was a huge, huge battle for a year to get them back. Mm-hmm. So, it's, it's, you know, I think that they have way too much power to take over just to be able to say, hey, you get your kids taken over, or, you know, hey, you have to pay child support because somebody says this is your kid. And I personally don't want to have this happen to me. I'm sorry that it has happened to you, but, you know, I want to prevent it at all costs. Well, keep in mind they're putting people in jail for failure to pay child support, and doesn't that go against our Constitution, the Emancipation Approximation Act, that you may not be jailed or enslaved over a debt? We'll have to leave that as a rhetorical question because we're yeah. out of time here. Taryn, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, the easiest way would be my e email. That would be vets versus PF, as in paternity fraud, at AOL.com, or just type in Taryn James or Veterans Fighting Paternity Fraud. The page will come right up. Taryn is spelled T-A-R-O-N, by the way. Yes. Taryn, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And by the way, uh, you can find out about the National Coalition of Free Men, uh, the Los Angeles chapter. Uh, of course, they'll refer you to the national organization as well. Uh, if you go to our website, blowmeuptom.com, there's a link right on the front page. If you want to get more involved in this issue, and I know many of you do, that is the way to do it. And our thanks to Taryn James and everybody for calling in this hour. Fantastic. Appreciate it all. Hey, our email address 